So Dragons of Nine Realms comes back for Season 7 on September 14th, and I am just riveted to see what happens next. I'd much rather talk about another better show that came out in 2021, and it's a show I've actually already made a video about last year called Kid Cosmic. A show that is actually amazing in pretty much every single way. I've only talked about the first season last year, and I've been meaning to get to seasons 2 and 3 as well, but, you know, it got away from me. Fortunately, I do have a little time before the Nine Realms returns, so hopefully I can get to it before it's too late. But before that, let's talk about Netflix and how it kind of hates animation now. You see, last year, Netflix went through a bit of a purge of animated content. You'll bet your sweet bippy I did! Shows were just inexplicably cancelled out of nowhere, movies were cancelled, and what remained was hot fucking garbage. Remember, we got Marmaduke over Bone. We got fucking Marmaduke over Bone. Let that sink in. But, to be fair, it wasn't all bad. We got that Rise of the Team of Team movie last year that was actually amazing. Guillermo del Toro released his Oscar-winning Pinocchio last year, and it was really good too. And even this year, we saw the release of Nimona, perhaps one of the most important movies to come out in recent years. So, yeah, it hasn't been all bad for animation on Netflix. It's still shitty what happened, of course. Hey, yo, what the fuck? But we're still seeing some quality stuff here every once in a while on the service. Which is why, when I saw the trailers for this so-called Monkey King movie, I'll admit I was intrigued. I know the story of the Monkey King pretty well. I mean, it is the story that inspired Dragon Ball, of course. And if you've been around my channel for the last few years, then you should know I am a huge fan of Dragon Ball. So the Monkey King is just one of four different stories coming from an old Chinese novel known as Journey to the West. It's kind of like how the Jungle Book is multiple stories with Mowgli's story being one of them. It's an ancient novel that's existed since the 16th century and is regarded as some of China's greatest stories, and for good reason. The story of the Monkey King, or Sun Wukong, focuses on a monkey who was born from a rock and obtains great powers over the course of his journey. These powers include super strength, cloning, and even immortality. After rebelling against heaven and even Buddha himself, Sun Wukong is locked away into a mountain, forced to reflect upon everything he's done before being released and becoming a hero to humanity. Like I said, there's a reason it's lasted for over 500 years. It's a cool and interesting story about forging one's own path and rebelling against destiny for the sake of one's own happiness. There have been multiple takes on the character over the years on both television and film, which easily the most famous interpretation being that of Son Goku from Dragon Ball, which as I said earlier was heavily inspired by the story. Perhaps the most recent one I can think of is that of Monkey Kid from Lego. Yeah, fucking Lego of all things. And it's actually a really good show too! It's from the same studio that made Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and the animation is spectacular. They even got the voice of Goku to be Sun Wukong in that show. Like, that's how dedicated they were to telling the story. Try to find it if you can, because the release of the show is insanely weird, and you kinda have to jump through some hoops to watch it, but it's worth it if you can find it. But now, there's this new Monkey Kid movie here on Netflix, and it is fucking awful. It's trash. It's surprisingly really bad. Like, honestly, when I saw the trailers for this, I wasn't expecting anything that was remarkable. Honestly, when I saw the trailer, for this, I wasn't expecting anything all that remarkable. The animation looked fine, the voice acting was fine, it seemed more like some dumb kitty movie, but I figured I'd give it a shot anyway. And let me tell you guys something, it's been quite a while since I wanted to shove my face into a spitting buzzsaw to end the pain. It's that bad. This is one of the most awkwardly paced and annoying movies I've seen since perhaps Marmaduke. This is a movie that, for the life of it, cannot shut up or stop for two seconds to let a moment breathe. There is always this constant noise and movement on the screen and it is just agonizing to watch. This is a movie that feels like it was edited and animated for babies. Stupid fucking babies that need constant noise and movement just to distract them. And honestly, that might be an insult to babies. Oh, but keep in mind, this is a Monkey King story, in that it can be a pretty dark story at times. People do in fact die in this movie. There's constant talk about one's purpose in the universe, and how we're all insignificant pebbles that have no purpose in the grand scheme of things, and yet this movie treats you like you're five. 
the way it's edited and animated is just so fast paced that it's damn near impossible to get a feel on what's going on whenever something's happening. Whether it's a fight scene or a chase scene or even this random ass musical number. <laughs> yeah, there's a sudden musical number right before the final battle and it is embarrassingly unmemorable. The lyrics suck ass and the singer really can't fucking sing. It's actually kind of cringe to sit through, my god. This movie is just constant bounciness and bright colors. You know, something to keep your stupid ass infant from crying for an hour and a half. Which again, is kind of weird considering how dark this movie can be at times. And I'm not saying it can't be dark, it's just weird how this movie wants to tell an actual Monkey King story, while at the same time, doing nothing but shutting your toddler up for a little while. It's so bizarre. Like, who is this movie even made for? Uh, well, it's a cartoon, isn't it? So clearly it's just for kids, grown-ass adult. Nobody Like I said, this movie cannot stop to take a breath and let the moment sink in, no matter how important it's supposed to be. This movie will just keep zipping around from plot point to plot point without ever taking the time to even establish where we are, who is who, what's what. You know, for a movie that's about the Monkey King, it surprisingly tells us very little about it. The movie just throws you into the story and expects you to just accept everything that happens. Oh, what? This monkey was born from a rock? Oh, yeah, don't worry, he just does that. Oh, what, he can breathe underwater? Sure, why not? Wait a minute, he can talk to the staff, which the characters never call a staff for some reason, even though anyone who looks at it can clearly see it's a staff! Yeah, of course he can. Duh. The movie never bothers to explain how the world works, how heaven and hell works, how the Buddha works. These are such important things to understand when it comes to Monkey King's motivation and who he wants to be. But the movie never bothers to explore anything, especially not the main character, who might just be one of the most obnoxious main characters I've ever had the displeasure of sitting through. Hell, I think I'd rather sit through the entirety of Cars 2 and all of its dumb characters again instead of this asshole. But hey, at least you can say Mater is a nice guy at the end of the day. You wouldn't call Mater an asshole, would you? No, just a fucking dumbass. But Monkey King, he's an absolute piece of shit. He is one of the most unlikable main characters I've ever seen. Monkey King is such a dick in this movie. The way he just doesn't care about anybody but himself, and yet the movie will try to write him off like he's this tragic figure who nobody likes, and is simply trying to find his place in the world. And like, I get it. He's supposed to learn a lesson by the end of all of this, but dude, the movie never shows us that side of him. There is never a moment where Monkey Kid shows us any form of sympathy for anyone around him. There's the scene where he defeats this fire demon and destroys a village in the process, and then pretty much forces the people of the village to give him a little parade in his honor, you know, for saving him in the village. Wow, what a likable and genuine guy. Again, I know he's supposed to learn to be more humble by the end, but he actually doesn't. If anything, he ends up becoming the villain of the story. He goes absolutely batshit crazy and tries to take over all of heaven before Buddha is forced to step in and trap him into a mountain, which I'll admit was an interesting idea for him to become the villain by the end, but the movie keeps treating him like it's this tragic story, like he never had a family, he's never had any friends, which is why he's doing all of this. He just wants to find his place in the world. And like, that could work if you actually showed us that tragic side of him. But like I said, there's never a moment where we actually focus on that, where we get to see him show any compassion for anyone but himself. There's a scene where this girl named Lynn, who's following him around, tells him about her story and how she doesn't really have a family of her own, and what does Monkey King say to her? Wow, I wish I could relate to that. Y you see, y you get it guys? It's funny because even though he could totally relate to her, he said he doesn't because it's funny! What little quote-unquote emotion, if you can even call it that, is always underplayed and rushed through. We can't have our characters actually talk to each other or just sit down with their thoughts and process what just happened beforehand. What do you think this is, Pixar? DreamWorks? Nope, 
we just gotta haul ass to the next bright and colorful fight scene, otherwise the toddlers watching this might get bored! Sorry, but it's just so hard to feel bad for him when he's always been an unlikable prick to everyone the entire time. Even Lin, the person he's supposed to care about the most, he always treats like shit, only saving her whenever it benefits him and that's it. Even she can't fucking stand him and only does so because she's working for the Dragon King. Oh yeah, I forgot, there's also this dumb liar revealed subplot in this movie, dear god. The humor is insufferable. This is one of the most unfunny movies I've seen in a while. Just desperately shoving in jokes where they don't belong or having the absolute worst delivery. It's either dumb kitty one-liners or slapstick or modern talk. Yeah, for a movie based in the 16th century, they sure say things like, oh yeah, totally, quite often. It's annoying. But honestly, probably the weirdest thing to me about this movie is that it serves as an introduction to the Monkey King, but it's weird to me because this entire movie could have easily been summed up in like five to 10 minutes. Everything involving him finding his staff, ganging immortality, being locked away in the mountain, you could have easily skipped all that and just gone straight to the way more important stuff down the line when the movie ends. Why wasn't this just a journey to the West story? You could have skipped pretty much all of this crap. Everything involving Lin, the Dragon King, all this shit, you could have shown all this crap in the first 15 minutes. But instead, we got this obnoxious, annoying, generic ass MacGuffin quest for random shit that Monkey King needs just to become the Great Sage, which he doesn't even become in this movie. They don't even call him Sun Wukong. Never in this movie do they ever call him Sun Wukong. That's his fucking name! And yet they just call him Monkey King. They don't ever call him Sun Wukong. That's just- I'm sorry, that's a nitpick, but that's just so fucking weird to me. You don't call Monkey King Sun Wukong in a movie about the fucking Monkey King. What the fuck is that about? Again, it ends right before all the cool shit goes down. Like, I don't care about Lin and her stupid village. I don't care about this Dragon King and how he's just a lamer, more gay version of Jafar. I don't care about his annoying ass sidekicks either. Th this movie sucks! It's fucking terrible! God, I don't wanna fucking talk about this shit anymore. It's just, it sucks. Like, what else is there to say, man? It's bad. It's really fucking bad. It's way worse than I thought it was gonna be. I thought this was just gonna be some simple, generic kitty film, but no, it is bad. It's really fucking bad. It's loud, it's obnoxious, it's annoying, it's stupid, it's just plain mean-spirited and unlikable. God, it's a shame because the story of the Monkey King is a good story, and in the right hands, it can be done well. I mean, look at Dragon Ball, look at Lego Monkey Kid. These are great examples that the Monkey King does have a place in modern media. But when it's done like this... You'll never amount to anything. I heard that all the time back home. Wow. Wish I could relate. Yeah. It might be best to just leave him in that mountain for good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some unfinished business to attend to, and it involves a kid, a teenager, a toddler, an old man, and a talking cat that swears. Hot damn, is it time to go cosmic. Hey, desire, burning like a fire. What you gonna do when it crumbles down? Watch it get higher, down to the wire. Will you let it burn till we almost drown? Hi, goodbye, honey, where do we lie? Where you're headed, am I going there too? I don't want